Well, Judy, it's so good to be with you again. Boy, it's been a while since we made a video. It has <laughs> been a, a while. Time. It's good but to just, be back. Yes. Well, we I know you've been very much uh, very busy, and uh, but I thought just with the vaccine kind of coming out and news that people can be vaccinated, I just thought it'd be very helpful to have a message of what's going on, you know, what are things looking like. It's just so much different information out there. There's some disinformation, there's a lot of feelings and thoughts and opinions, and I just thought it'd be good to hear from you, from your point of view at uh, Marathon uh, County Health, you know, what what is going on with things. So first, just let me ask you, where are we at with things as far as a vaccine, as far as coronavirus, what do things look like right now from your desk? Well, first of all, um, I'm happy to say that overall our cases um, that get reported each day have been going down. and. <clears throat> That's been uh, good news. Um, so there are, uh, seemingly are less people that are sick um, and that's good news. We're, we're always happy to know that. Um, the, the second thing is uh, right around Christmas time, uh, vaccine became available. And so um, since uh, I think December 23rd might've been the first vaccine, but since then we have given we being our healthcare providers have given over 6,000 doses of vaccine to the residents of Marathon County. Now, other counties, you know, would report their own numbers, but those are just Marathon County residents that have received at least one dose of vaccine. So it's a start. Wonderful. And where are we at with like the coronavirus numbers and that? It doesn't seem to be in the news as much. You know, these past couple of weeks, how, how does this look and what has been the guidance of, um, you know, the health experts in our state as far as, you know, mask usage and all these other things? Is that lightening up or what should we be aware of? Well, mask um, usage um, is still good. Um, there are still some people that, that don't want to wear masks, but overall, most people are wearing masks and masks are a are a really good barrier, whether it's COVID or the flu or the common cold, a mask will help prevent um, any kind of airborne respiratory disease. Um, and what we've seen is in October and November, we were seeing you know, a thousand or more cases a month in Marathon County. In the last four weeks, we've been looking at you know, 350 to 450 cases per week. So the cases of COVID have been going down and also we're not seeing a lot of flu. So we believe that the masks are making a difference. Oh, that's wonderful. I saw in the news last week that they said that people age 65 or over are able to get the vaccine now. So what does that look like? Because uh, yeah. I know before we started hitting the record button, you were telling me about how things are really ramping up in your office. Could you tell us a little bit about what's going on these days with that? Yes, yes. So the first group of people to get vaccine were our healthcare providers. Um, and now um, beginning on, on Monday, the January 25th, um, the next group of people or phase of people is starting. And it's gonna start with those people that are 65 and over. Um, that's a big part of our population. In Marathon County, we have over 21,000 people that fit in that age group. So we have a lot of people that are eligible to get vaccine um, and a lot of people that wanna get vaccine, which is wonderful. The, the challenge we have right now is our supply isn't uh, large enough to give as many vaccines as, as people want, as quickly as people want. So what does the supply look like right now? I mean, so at the state level, um, we receive about 70,000 doses a week. And at the state level, we have 700,000 people that are over the age of 65. So simple math, you can see that it will take us about 10 weeks to get through this over 65 population now, a couple of things can, can help that along. Um, if we get more vaccine, which I'm hoping we do, we may be able to move through that a little bit faster, but it's gonna take some time for us to get all of our 65 plus folks vaccinated. 
So if people who are eligible want to be vaccinated, where should they go? What should they do? Because I think some people are kind of wondering what's the best way to get in line? What's the best way to get in queue, if you will? Right, right. So if you're 65 or over, the best way for you to get in line is to contact the provider that you would normally go to. So if you go to Marshfield Clinic, um, contact the clinic that you go to. Also, the best way if you have internet access is to contact them through their web page. Um, phone lines get bogged down very, very quickly. And Marshfield asks that you contact them and register to get your vaccine through their website. If you need help with that, you know, ask a, a friend or neighbor, maybe somebody that uh, has you know, access to help you, but that's the best way. And I know some hospital systems like Aspirus, you can use the patient portal as well. Uh, Ascension, the patient portal, I've been hearing you can do that. I right, know right. personally, I am now eligible for vaccine um, as of this past week. And so I went on Marshfield Hospital's website. I registered, let them know who I was. And I got a call the next day, a very friendly 10 minute phone call. And I've got uh, a date for vaccine in that. So you know, I'm moving forward with that as well. And it was a very painless process up to this point, but I haven't been pricked yet though. We'll find out, <laughs> <laughs> but um, it was pretty easy. And I know my reasoning for the vaccine is just, I am such a public figure right now with being a priest, with the religious ed, with the food pantry, with my visits to the nursing homes, hospitals, all of that. And I know the hospitals have told me, especially in the COVID unit, that once I'm vaccine vaccinated, that I'll have a lot greater freedom as far as really being with people, you know, in those health states. So that's really been my motivation that way. And that was the motivation behind the phase 1A of healthcare workers and fire and EMS and all those folks is that um, like you, they interact with so many people and many times they're interacting with sick people, especially the healthcare workers. And so we wanna make sure that we protect you um, and keep you from getting COVID. Oh, God willing, God willing. Yes. Um, so what I hear you telling me is for people who are 65 or over or maybe eligible and another way to contact the primary health care provider mm -hmm. um, and to work that route or to use the Marshfield website, website if we live in oh, Clark County, okay. Marathon County, whatever hospital system we fall under. You know, I, I talk to a lot of people and as you do too, Judy, and mm -hmm. I, I hear a lot of different opinions and thoughts on the vaccine. I, I know that the U.S. bishops came forward and said that the Pfizer Moderna vaccines are ethical um, as far as the research and development. The bishops have been very clear that we should not, for religious reasons, feel that the vaccine may be unethical in any way, good. Um, which is a, a good news. It's not for every vaccine that's in development, but the two that are out there are ethical. But there's a lot of people questioning whether it's good, whether it's healthy, um, whether it's been pushed, what are you seeing and hearing about this from, from your point of view? Well, I am not seeing, I'll start with what I'm not seeing. I'm not seeing um, a lot of people having reactions, severe reactions are, are we've not seen. Um, we hear reports of people having soreness at the injection site, um, mild symptoms, particularly after the second dose, but we're not seeing the major reactions from this vaccine, which gives me confidence that everything that I read um, about the safety of the vaccine is in fact coming true to our personal experience with you know, friends and family that we know that have had the vaccine. Wonderful. And so you had mentioned that there's two injections for the vaccine. Well, yes. What does that look like? Yes. It's a two-dose series. Um, if you've had children, you're familiar with certain certain vaccines come in multiple uh, multiples. Um, the COVID virus vaccine is a two-dose series. Um, they are the first dose um, is followed by a second dose, which happens either 21 or 28 days later, and that the difference there is it it differs between the manufacturer. So if you get the Pfizer vaccine, you need to get your second dose has to also be a Pfizer vaccine. Same with if you get Moderna, your second dose has to be Moderna. 
And um, the two manufacturers just have a different lag time in between uh, the first and second dose. Um, I hear some people who are very much worried about health effects or this, you know, might be dangerous. It's more dangerous to get the vaccine than it is to take the chance of getting the virus. What would you say to someone thinking that? Yeah. Uh, at this point, I, I'm going off of the, the, the real lived experience that we've had. I think many of us maybe even most of us know someone who has either been terribly, terribly ill or passed away from COVID. And, um, and that's sad and hard to, uh, but part of, part of this experience, we've not been seeing that happen with the vaccine. Um, we've not been seeing reactions, you know, severe reactions. We've not been seeing any severe complications. And so, what I've read in the science is really holding true to my experience with, you know, people that I know um, that have either had COVID or had COVID vaccine. One thing I hear too is people say, okay, I get vaccinated. What does that change in my life? Does it mean I get to stop wearing a mask? Does it mean that I could start having people over my house again? Yeah. Um, what does it mean to be vaccinated? What would you say to that? What it means to be vaccinated is that if you get COVID, you won't have the symptoms. You, you won't end up really, really, really sick like you may have it without the vaccine. The research that still that continues to be ongoing with the whole vaccination process is we still need to make sure that if you've been vaccinated and you get COVID, that you can't transmit that virus to somebody else. So you may have been vaccinated, feel fine, but you may still be able to transmit it to someone else. So we still want people to wear masks, particularly until we can learn more about transmission after vaccination. And because we still have a lot of people that need to get vaccinated. So even though you're safe and protected, we have a whole lot of other people that haven't had vaccine yet. So it's still important to protect others by wearing your mask. Very good, Judy. I think that was all my questions. Is there anything else you wanted to inform us of or talk to us about? Um, I guess I would just close with um, that we're at a point in time where there's a lot of excitement around getting vaccine, just like it was last summer when there was a lot of um, excitement about getting tested if you had symptoms. And I think it's, it's gonna take us a little while to get the vaccine supply and demand kind of leveled off. And I would just ask people to be patient, um, take their turn in line, let, let our 65 and over get their vaccine and continue to um, move through the whole vaccination process. It's gonna take a while to get everybody, everybody done, but it's, uh, we're on our way. Well, thank you, Judy. Well, we very much appreciate everything you do and your team in Marathon County. Of course, all the Clark County folks as well. Mm -hmm. Very much uh, thankful. I've been very thankful to be in touch with all of you through all these months, through many, many meetings and everything as we continue to work together. And uh, we look forward to continuing to hear from you and continuing to hear any updates as they become, uh, they, they come to the surface. But thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Thank you. You too. Thank you.